What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another Jump Tezuka manga review. This week, we're doing three more reviews, three more one-shots, plenty of fun to be had in store. This week, we're doing Cyber Droids by Venetia's Lavore, Kenji's Normal Life by Malachi Monroe, and Feta Morgana by Ultra Desi. A lot of people with cool names this this time around. So seriously, that's you know probably we the coolest author names at. we've had so far. Yeah. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and start with Cyber Droids, but before that, in case you guys don't know about the Jump Tezuka contest, it's too late. You fucked up. You've missed it. You're <laughs> going to have to hope they do another international contest next year. I don't know what you've been doing, but it is a special award that is usually only available to people in Japan, but it is the 100th anniversary, so it's open international, and you have the chance to get your manga judged by some of the great of the greats, really. I'm talking author of Dragon Ball Z, author of One Piece, Blue Exorcist, My Hero, Slam Dunk, and then, of course, the folks over the the Tezuka Productions, who are the people putting on this contest. And the winner gets a fuck ton of cash and a chance to be serialized in Shonen Jump, which is pretty fucking cool. If you're doing a one shot, that's a huge prize. With that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move into Cyber Droids by Venetius Lavore. So kicking it off, we open up to an arena full color. Okay, so we're not we're not cutting any corners here. And they're there to witness the finals between the recent Cyber Droid prodigies, Flint and Ace. They're competing for something called the Legendary Silver Ticket. And Ace is using kind of a weird-ass looking blue and white robot. There's no other way to describe it. Uh, and it's called Excella Spacer, which is a cool name. So, yeah. congrats. Then Flint is using an even cooler robot, in my opinion, which is like kind of like a beetle, beetle mixed with like a almost – he looks kind of like a gas mask wearing soldier. Like you'd see in like World War II. I thought he looked sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the name of beetle Draft Bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all. I mean, that's pretty simple. But his droid was way cooler than yeah. Excel Spacer. So they have a big battle. We find out that some more information about the cyber droids is the more it moves and uses techniques, its battery will wear out. So there is a bit of a time limit depending on how hard you work your cyber droid. And every cyber droid has a nucleus that if you hit, the droid will automatically turn off. And then another note we get actually like a couple panels after they explain the first two is if you take the droid out of the stadium, it also counts as a victory. Let me go ahead and spoil the Reno. That does not come into play at all here, but just keep okay. that in mind. So Ace's battery is getting a little low, and we get the classic anime situation. We're going to go out on one more attack. We're going to put it all on the line one more attack. And so Flint is like, yeah, hey, I know what he's going to try and do. Just hold tight and defend, which, you know, good strategy. He's a beetle, so yeah. great strategy. They clash. A big explosion happens. We see smoke, and then we see Draft Bug with both of his arms fucking blown off. And Excella Spacer and Ace Dash, which is his last name, are the winners of the contest. And this is when we get a weird part where, like, Flint comes over to congratulate him. And Ace basically tells him, like, yo, fuck off, pussy. Like, stop stop talking yeah. to me. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, this is the third time I've beaten you with this big of an audience. So it's like, okay, sure. It's like, I guess we're going to be assholes. Yeah. And then we they show us that he has, like, a wristband called Excel Gear, which saves his BP. Yeah, like pretty much petroleum? currency. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he said he was he, rich after that. Yeah, and he gets his cool like ticket. He gets his silver ticket, and then we get a cool, nice little like celebratory photo of him waving to the fans. You know, congratulations, Ace. At this point in the story, we're gonna pause for a second. I had no idea if Ace is the main character of the story or if it's Flint. It could have been either or. Like this could have been a Kaiba Yugi situation. So, and we're watching Kaiba win. I, I, I get what legit, you mean. Yeah. I was legit gonna ask you. Is like. Based off their pictures, who did you think was going to be the main character? And as soon as I saw Ace, I was like, oh, that's my character. Dude, well, okay. And then I he thought became that... a huge asshole. Yes. I thought yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah. And then I switched to Flint. I was like, oh, he must be the main character because he, he's like, a Gary. Ace was like, fuck off, bitch. And then I was like, oh, okay, so it's got to be Flint. And it's like, no, it's, it's Ace yeah. as we continue to find out. So yeah, they're really switching up the norms. They just want to make oh, sure yeah. you identify yeah, with yeah. an asshole. <laughs> we. Cut to a couple of panels showing off Metal City, where we get to see there's lots of cyber droid merch. There's people walking upside down using, like, metal shoes. It's a weird city. And we see a mysterious new person with his cyber droid that he refers to as Zero One overlooking the city. We don't know the name of the character yet. And we cut back to Ace. He's taking a shortcut on his way back home after winning. He has his Excel Spacer, or whatever the fuck its name was, with him. And he runs into a gang of junk traders. They want all of his VP and the silver ticket, of course, as any uh, natural gang would want. Mm -hmm. And that's when we see Mac, which is the name of the mysterious character from before. 
and Zero One show up to the scene, but they're kind of like above the scene and they're just kind of watching. They're watching what's going down with Ace and the Junk Traders. Ace is getting attacked by the gang and they summon like their cyber dread that looks like a bear, which uh, is the Five least Nights cool of the three we've seen. It does look like Five Nights at Freddy. That's a great point. Uh, and that's when we see that Max Cyber Droid Zero One. He wants to help out, but Max is like, nah, I want to see what kind of character this guy has. So they don't help. And that's when Classic. we see Excel Spacer just get taken out. It wasn't even that close of a fight at all. And the gang is basically standing right in front of Ace because his Cyber Droid's down. They got a Cyber Droid still up, so what's going to happen? And Ace fucking books it, which, you know, fair play. Take your money, leave the droid, who cares? But then Ace gets to a safe spot. We get a little bit of like self-introspection. What am I doing in my life? You know, he was my friend. I just left Excel Spacer back there, which really is just a cyber droid, so who cares? But he says if he's gonna reach the top, it has to be together, and eventually runs back to go try and save Excel Spacer. What if, what if he comes back and the Excel robots are just like complete yeah, completely yeah. in pieces. They just left and he's just like, oh. I would have loved that. <laughs> yeah, it's a possibility. Um, it kind of reminded me. Either of you guys see Battle Angel Alita? I have not. Uh, um, no, but I did see a lot of promos. So for there it. is like a part in that where like uh, there are gangs of people who will come by and like steal modified parts off of people because you know like they have like robot arms and stuff because there's a lot yeah. of money to be made in there. So it's like yeah, just did assemble it really quick and then you're good. Fucking leave. But he does go back and they have not disassembled him yet but that is on the table because they're talking about i'm gonna attack him and we'll sell whatever's left of him because you know fuck excel spacer and yep. that's when ace jumps in between the gang cyber droid just about to attack excel spacer and he gets attacked and said it seems like he would have been taken out for the count here but it, it just got a couple of scratches he's chilling i suppose yeah. because then ace just puts on his goggles ties his rift jacket around him like a sash looking really cool at this point actually and declares, if you want to pass, if you want to lay a finger on the cyber droid, you'll have to pass through him, which would be a very easy call. A droid versus a human, yep. that would be very easy. And that's yeah. finally when Mac and Zero One hop in. The rest of the uh, gang call in their cyber droids now. So now they it's five cyber droids against Zero One. And I'm talking one cyber droid and the cyber droid named Zero One. So they're the same yep. thing. Max says it's time, and then Zero One opens up like a panel in his back, which Max sticks his arm into, and fires like a fucking combo attack, like almost like a gun, plasma burst. Damn. And it Just like the first fight, it's over very quickly because that one beam obliterates all the droids and all the junk traders in one attack. And I do feel like they make a certain point of showing you that the uh, bear-looking cyber droid, you know, the Five Nights at Freddy guy, his head is still alive and intact, and it's, like, half kind of ripped off. So I oh. would assume that this guy is going to be a reoccurring character. Same thing with the uh, the main uh, junk trader. He's still alive and on the ground. So I would assume they probably circle back around at some point. Fair play. I didn't catch that. So Ace finally turns around because, you know, he was guarding Excella Spacer, but Mac and Zero One are already gone. And that's when we get a nice little conversation between Excel Spacer, which is the cyber droid, and they are talking like they are friends. And he asks, like, why Ace would come back for him because his gear is already destroyed. You know, it's like they, you could just save your credits and just le have left him. And we get Ace being a fucking sap. He's like, oh, my true prize today is being able to have you by my side again so we can rise to the top together. Puke. And so Ace and Excel Spacer start to head off, and that's when we see Ace kind of talk about the fight and how he's never seen a cyber droid do something like that before, specifically detonate five others at the same time. And he hopes to be able to see him once again, and that's when we see Mac and Zero One. They're back up in their hiding spot up top. They're just watching them walk away, smiling, looking happy, and that's the end. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of Metabots. Yeah, that's what – oh, dude, I could not think of it. Yeah, it was yeah. very, like, I don't know. It was, like, a mixture of a few things. And it was, like, yeah, it was, like, we got cool robot fights. We got, like, a good arena setting. Uh, it's, like, gladiatorial combat. But it seems like the robots can think and have possibly feelings because, yeah. like, Zero One wanted to go in when Mac didn't. So it seems like they're kind of alive. But then I imagine they don't have as much um, freedom as humans because, like, Excel Spacer wanted to go get repaired at one point. And uh, oh, yeah. Ace was, like, yeah, uh, later, later, dude. Where he was like, all he about was, himself. He, yeah, he's looking for that photo off. He's like, hey, we just won. I need to get that photo with you. Can't have to get polished. Shop. Yeah, so it's like, like they're oh still owned, but it's like they clearly ha they can think and do yeah. stuff. So I don't know. And, There's some weird setup there. 
I, I don't know about you, but I also, when I see someone getting mugged in an alleyway, like to watch and see what the mugged is going to do. Well, you got to kind of eye him up character. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to make sure that you're not going to get yeah. in their way. If you don't want to take him. the losing fight because if he's already going to lose, then it's just going to be worse I, by getting in there. So I, I don't think that was the case for Mac. And no, 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 no. It totally I, is. I see is. where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, you, just, I you watch first, there. see if they got any cool weapons, and then he There's knew he could take the fight. So then he's like, okay, I'm going to be really cool. I'm going to hop in. Should have been just like Hero Killer Stain. I hate you, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's it's interesting to note that this one was almost like uh, someone drew it on like paper and with like yeah. colored it with pencils. and like. So I kind of like that. It was very because this is like a one shot contest like for like people mm -hmm. getting their first manga into it, and this one to me more so than a lot of the other ones we felt. And I feel like this way for the three we actually read this week in general, it felt very much like, hey, this is somebody putting forward their best foot. Here's their first manga they're gonna submit. Like, check yeah. it out. Yeah, definitely. And I liked it. Yeah. It was kind of wholesome. It was like, yeah, it's like good job. It's like I like that. Yeah, I agree. Did you? So I don't know if it's just me being nitpicky on the character design or if it was. Are you talking about the head? The head. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> What's his, wrong with the head? The I think it's a character design. I think his hair, his head's larger than his body, but all the other characters have like pretty normal sized heads, and I'm wondering if it's got a thing to do with like his ego, or if that was just how he wants to go. Like, I think um, it's clearly an homage to Alita, where she has giant eyes and nobody else uh, has them. So, and so we just made the whole head. Yeah, <laughs> so we yeah. just dragged that out because <laughs> we the whole thing. Copyright infringement. I just assume it was just like I don't know, just the style. But I yeah, I, no. I didn't bother me or anything. I was like the art yeah. style. Um, it is worth noting that the um the English was kind of uh rough broken. throughout the manga. Yeah, yeah broken yeah. in some parts, but in other parts, fine. Uh, but I was still able to completely understand everything that was going on. But it was like sometimes the words were just not in the right order, or it just it was broken English. Um, but it still worked totally fine. Yeah. No, I I agree. I think it was good. Cool. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. I think that's been there, done that. That was, once again, Cyber Droids by Vinicius Lavore. We're going to move on to Kenji's Normal Life by Malachi Monroe. Jose, go ahead. We jump in and we meet this 14-year-old kid named Kenji who apparently cannot have a normal day in his life. And so we're going to follow a week in his life. Apparently, he's a genius and somehow it causes him to be unlucky. And yeah, that's pretty much what happens. That's it. No, oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, if you would, if you would have called it, like, yeah, that's that's it. But like, there yeah. you go. Yeah, it, it's pretty much it. Like, um, it starts with Friday. Uh, you know, he's late to class, as you know the MC usually is. A weird little tidbit, though. He's blind, uh, but he uses his senses. You know, since he's a genius, to kind of make glasses, um, so he can see. I didn't understand that part at all. I did see the part um, where he was blind, and he just says that he's no longer blind. And I was like, I don't get how we got to that point. Well, I don't think it's so important I mean, because this is very much yeah. like a gag comedy manga. But yeah. I did read that and I was like, okay. I was, I was like, that was the one bit I was confused. It doesn't really come up ever after. Yeah, it doesn't ever serve a purpose. So I was at like, least you know why he's wearing glasses the whole time. Um, so his teacher picks on him to go to to like read a paragraph or something. He's just like, eh, I need to go to the bathroom. And his teacher gets up. So he's like, read the damn book. Reads it. And then his teacher is finally like, oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Use the bathroom. And he's like, I don't have to go anymore. Still gets Oof. bonked on the head. Um, and then you see him waiting for his mom to pick him up, and then there's his office, and that's the end of Friday. So did he shit himself, and he's getting picked up in the nur nurse's office, or? It's not clear. I think he was just trolling the teacher. Yeah, I think he oh. got beat up, so he got to the nurse's office, and then he was waiting for his mom to pick him up. Yeah. Because okay. later jumps... in the manga, he does also get beat up again by his teacher, so I would assume that is what <laughs> yeah. happens. Yeah, <laughs> Saturday is pretty simple for him. He kind of like wakes up he hears the doorbell he rushes downstairs eats shit on the way um and his mom answers it and it's uh some kid at the sacha sasha maybe who he doesn't really like because he won't shut up is constantly talking about himself and then kind of decides to play tag and is somehow in his room once kenji decides to dip out of there and be like nah i ain't playing yeah he was kind of an ass to that guy because yeah. he was like yeah i don't want to play i'm just gonna go home but then, luckily, the guy was hiding inside of his room. He's like, oh, how'd you know? How'd you know I was going to be here? Yep. And he's like, uh, at, what point, at what point did you feel like you were starting to identify with Kenji? Yeah, and you were Sasha? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> every day, dude. The genius <laughs> part, friend day. that doesn't shut up, is like, man, 
I- I'm Damn, practically Sam. blind. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Making your own glasses. Sunday, he gets woken up by his dad, and his dad's like, yo! He's like, I need some fresh air. Opens it and somehow knocks Kenji out the window, to which the mom responds by slapping him, and then they all get into a giant brawl, uh, which, you know, he could have died. He did die, right? I think he, like, oh, it, oh, well, it, yeah, it, blow, like, it blows it blew, up. Yeah, it blows up part of the planet, and he's like, well, at least I ate some sushi before I died. Yeah, I was like, okay, fuck. We, so we just go in there, sure thing. Straight I mean, dead. He just kind of woke up, so I don't know if he ate sushi that yeah, day. Yeah, that was a short, was was a short day. Yeah, it was or, a short day for him because he died. Was it just in general? He's like, one of my life goals is I want to eat sushi. <laughs> yep. Now, it cuts to Monday. This part was a little unclear for me. But him and his friend Akira are just kind of like talking about something. He's like, did you wear Did you bring it? And all this and that. And then there's this girl. A teacher grades them and gives her a test. And she's like, oh, you didn't do so well, 57%. Then goes and looks at it. Uh, Kenji's like, oh, another 100% from you. Bell rings and he dips out as soon as he can. Uh, but the girl's chasing after her. To which both him and his friend are terrified of. Um, and then he's like, oh, don't worry. I got this thing. It'll zap her when she tries to punch me. But his friend, I think throws the remote and she catches it and is like nah bitch you're mine and shocks him instead now it's tuesday and he's like up to no good and apparently he has a clone that he sends in the class i think and he's picking up small dog poo poo for his invention and then while he's doing that a little dog comes and bites a chunk out of his pants out of his butt he pretty much runs away and then his teacher finds him and his teacher's like oh your your clone just cursed in my class so he beats him up and he's got a bunch of bumps on his dome when he gets home so he you know he's pretty unlucky so yeah. far now we're in wednesdays and he's having a pretty normal day you know he's just kind of chilling he doesn't get picked on apparently there's a new kid named kenji lee that sits behind him so he gets picked on a lot he like rushes home and then uh his parents have a big old bowl of food for him and as he's like about to go to sleep and he's like oh yeah he's like i finally had a normal day i wish it could last forever you look at the clock and it's 11:59, and then at the end it's like an evil smiley face and he's like damn it i'm not really yeah. sure what the blob is yeah, yeah I, think it explodes. I, I don't know but yeah that's that's the end of the manga on that part we go through a pretty much full week yeah it was interesting because this is a short one it was yep. 25 pages i think um yeah and the art was kind of interesting, and it was good. Like, the art was very good for the comedy kind of sketching yes, it was trying totally to be. Yes, totally matched it. Um, some of the jokes were better than others. Like, specifically, I like the day with the uh, the dad flings him out the window and the mom yeah. and the dad fight. <laughs> that was very good. Um, that was probably my favorite one. I felt like a lot of the unluckiness that he says is caused by him being a genius is not always caused by him being a genius. Yeah. So, by him being dumb it it, like. it's just like he's just plain unlucky like the yeah. stuff that is caused by him being a genius is probably like when he tried to use the electric shock thing and his clone but that's probably about it like him tripping down the stairs at one point it's like come on come on dude that's just yeah unlucky yeah. The, but my still, favorite I, bit was the mr hanzo can't respect the main character right after he gets yeah uh, yeah guys me up. that was very meta i was like okay cool it's like i'm yeah. on board with that but then it was just like kind of a weird how they show his normal day and it's like that I just feel like they didn't do anything for me. Yeah. I would have rather have just done sketch comedy all the way through and cuz like they show the normal day it's like oh look here he is he's doing this. Oh he's not getting picked on. Oh he didn't get chosen to read because there's a different Kenji. It's like it's like okay it's like cool I guess. Yeah. I I don't know. I I would have liked more sketch comedy and I agree the jokes didn't always hit but I mean, that's yeah. just how it goes with comedy. So you can't yeah. land 100% of them. But yeah, I, exactly. I like Kenji. Um, I mean, he's really the only character, character that really Character we matters. really meet. So yeah. the teacher was good. Um, His dad was funny. Yeah, there were, a lot, there were a lot of good stuff, but it was very short. Um, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I yeah. mean, it's only 25 pages. So Wish yeah. I got to see a tiny bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's move on to our last one. That was Kenji's Normal Life by Malachi Monroe. We're going to move on to Feta Morgana by Altradesi. And go ahead, Josh. All right, so uh, we start with, like, the classic young and rambunctious kid and the wise older man in some, like, random desert, and they're kind of chit-chatting with each other. Um, they travel to a market, which is called Feya Largeo, or Feya Largo, I think. So there is a passerby that bumps into the girl and some of her stuff drops out and it's like these rare cubes that she's collecting. 
they don't really go into more detail about it after that. Oh, the Millennium Puzzle. <laughs> there also appears to be like an unusual drought causing water to be scarce here. Then we go to the girls now chatting with the kid in the street, just some random kid. Uh, he's offering to play a game with her. She wants to hang out with him after she comes back from her mission. And then the father figure just basically hands him this black flower, and then they head towards this light that they saw. So this is their last job, apparently. Uh, the father goes in alone, and he begins a slight conversation, and then immediately starts punching this dude, uh, who then transfers into or transforms into a creature with like roots and thorns for appendages. Uh, the father gets trapped when this transformation happens, and the girl walks in to see this. And immediately the dad's like, hey, remember who you are, Morgana. And she transforms into like a feral version of herself. Her hair spikes up. Her hands go into like spike claws. And she cuts off the uh, appendages. And then she starts fighting with this guy. And we find out that we actually have a reoccurring character throughout like the entire otaku universe. A uh, guy with gun appears through the dad. <laughs> yeah, and, I like that uh, part. Guy when with he gun. Out a gun. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get him. So, um, basically, it's like a two prong. She's beating the crap out of this guy. He's shooting the guy from the back, which is kind of stressing me out because it seems like in some of the panels, it was him shooting at her. I could, it was ah. just like stressing well, me like out. Like a lot of the time, right? He was like, move or like, stop. Or, yeah, like, yeah, telling her to like, get out of the way. Stop, move, but move, she wouldn't stop. stop. And it was and like, okay. And after a few seconds, classic move, the villain goes more powerful. He basically starts to reveal that he was a part of this like experiment to be able to harness the power of the sun. Um, and that not a, like typical, not a lot of people survived this. Uh, some of them went missing. So should have just made them all drink Sunny D. Sam, that's you ruined. They had grants for that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just like Shark Tank, just yeah. sit up there, like, well, why, why can't I just drink Sunny D? It's like, yeah, why do I need to do the experiment when we have it, Sunny D? It's like, I we're just killing people over this shit. <laughs> oh my god. Well, fuck. Uh, let me just add that as a note. <laughs> um, so. Uh, they also kind of hint that people went missing. So uh, classic, like, hey, this could pop up later on that like somebody went missing and they were super strong or some shit like that. Um, so this guy levels up. I'm not going to repeat the name of the level. It was just a lot of words. Uh, it had a specific name. Morgana then flexes even harder and basically upgrades to level two herself and starts attacking him while guy with gun shoots. The villain then kind of creates like a barrier around him, like a pod, and she starts beating the crap out of it. And the uh, the father is now realizing that she's overheating. And he's asking her to like step back. She's not. She's telling him to fuck off again. When all this is happening, we get another flashback to what I'm assuming is Morgana's father and mother, where they had the kid. Um, they're kind of talking, or he's basically reminiscing about her childhood, her birth. Um, and then we find out that she was also part of this experiment, which kind of, you know, goes in line with why she's able to evolve as well. And then we know that the villain's waiting behind the um, blockade to essentially stab her the moment she comes through. So he's he's prepped. Um, as soon as she breaks through, she faints and he goes in for the stab. Then we find out not only is he guy with gun, he's guy with gun with actual level up power too. So he goes like full i don't reminds me of another character but he goes full like fury mode his arm gets bigger he starts shooting essentially incendiary flame cannon uh bullets blows through this dude and just obliterates him and then the dude is dying in like basically in flames and he's like curious you know he's a hunter and she's a parasite um wonder what's going on there um the father then tells her, like, hey, it's time to go to sleep. Uh, and she basically is like a bipolar, kind of has like two personalities. When she's in this mode, she has a certain set of memories. And then she fades back into her childish self. And she's like, oh, dad, did you fight somebody again? Oh, look, and finds another one of these cubes she's been collecting. So you kind of put together that they've been doing this for a long time. She had a shit ton of fucking cubes. And every time you kill one of these parasites, you get a cube. And as they're leaving this burning building that they just kind of left in the middle of the desert, 
Uh, we have a picture of the final cube, I'm assuming, being complete, and they're heading towards a new light. Um, but she's still thinking, oh, I want to go to the beach. I want to go relax and stuff. And that's where we end. So my take was like a lot of cool concepts, but a lot of shit seemed really unnecessary. Like the whole market scene. I don't understand the black flower. I don't understand the, the droughts. The level up system? The level up system seems cool. I would have liked more about that. I would have liked to know more about how they use their powers, how they get them. Um, it seemed like we only got like little tidbits as soon as they occurred, and then we would go right back into it. Also, I'd like to know more maybe about the final cube. Um, have no idea what's going on with that. And just a, a little bit more about the UV light system or maybe like a, a background of... They're like Superman. Was, yeah, like why, why was this necessary? Exactly. It did almost seem like we came in on the end because like they're finishing the cube. Like it's yeah. finished at the end. Like they've been collecting all of these cubes and they're like, oh, this is our last one. Cool. And th there's a part where when the villain's dying, he's like, oh, if I was your final, you know, I'm sorry to hear that or something like that. He's thinking it. So I don't know if it's like, oh, he's not even close to being the most powerful or like jokes on you guys. Like you got another decade's worth of shit to do. I was honestly expecting the dad to die here the way everything was going, but it just seemed. Turned out like to be a badass. Had... Yeah, he seemed like a badass, but a lot of the plot lines seemed like they could have gone somewhere, but none of them went in one direction. Like it wasn't cohesive and there wasn't like an a meaning to a lot of stuff but otherwise besides that it was actually cool i, I want to see more of like that skill set see what they were doing and I, like sam said this feels like the end so i would have liked to have seen where they got all those other cubes or like what's going on with all that um what would you guys think so for me it reminded me of soul liquid chambers you guys remember that yeah, one we read from Engaku, where the girl has the, the she kind of switches out her souls and one is a badass and one is not that's kind of what it felt like to me with the main chick because she does go to sleep or whatever he calls it. Yeah. And then, and she, then wakes up the, the other one. person wakes up like, oh, did you fight again? It's like, oh, okay, I want to go to the beach. So it is very much like a different one. And what I kind of was getting a feel of, which I don't know, it almost kind of felt like maybe like what happened to her mother? Like, is that maybe yeah. her mother's personality that she has in there? And this oh. is they fight. Um, I didn't know what was going on. Some of the fight scenes was a little hard for me. It seemed like it would um, yeah. jump too harshly from one action to the other one. So it'd be like, oh, okay, I guess he's attacking now or he's getting pulled across the room. I like the stuff uh, about the experiments and the special abilities. Uh, I like the parasite and hunter thing and the level up system because the bad guy is like, oh, I can tell that you probably boosted your strength and your stamina or something like that. So like you can clearly boost certain attributes specifically Got so you. that was a cool part. Just like a little throwaway line that was like, yeah, I can tell you did this, this. And then he's like, well, surprise, motherfucker. I could do it too. And then I do like the hiding in the dome bit. It was very Naruto reminiscent of Gara and Rock Lee. I like that. Yep. Um, but yeah, there was stuff like I, I don't have a problem with the market part. The uh, fact that there's no water doesn't play any sort of role in this story. That, that, that seems like that could have been left out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they do try to kind of bait and switch you like a they're wandering through the desert like oh I see something it's, it's a light and they're like oh that must be a mirage but it's like no that's what they're looking for that part I'm okay with the part of the time they spent on saying that there's no water I think could have just been cut altogether don't yeah. even know that um, because the only thing that matters is really them talking to the little kid and that's kind of like setting up character of like this girl likes the, little, the, the girl is basically very innocent that's kind of the only thing we take from that and then we move into the cool fight scene uh, which kind of also doesn't make a lot of sense because the dad tells the daughter to stay out of it when they first show up, but then he starts losing and he just luckily she wanders in. It's like, what if she never came in after him? He'd just be dead. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it's strange because like she didn't really do much in terms of like her blossoming. Like she was, yeah, she did break through his shield. He kind of used her like a distraction almost. It felt like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if he just bloomed or leveled up. When he seemed like know. he didn't want to do his big final attack because like he was only going to do it because like, oh, she's fucking it up. Like, yeah. she's about to get whomped, so I guess I have to do this. So, But they don't talk about any downfall or anything like that. And yeah. once again, this one was 30-something pages, so there was more room 40, yeah. to put more stuff in because you're allowed yeah. 55. 
Um, but it's like they have a cool concepts in there. I just think it could have been executed slightly better and maybe given yeah. more information because they do talk about like the guy's power, like Josh mentioned, like he's a part of a like research facility that harness the sun, which is cool. And then yeah. they talk about the dad's power. He could like hide his UV powers. So like but he couldn't also, be sensed coming in. He's mm-hmm. not supposed to have these powers. He's just a hunter. So he's done 30 years of training. I'm assuming training. He says it takes 30 years for him to have gotten to this point. So he's technically not supposed to have those powers, which was cool, but where you know, I would have liked more about that or why he was able to do that kind of stuff. Well, it's like that stuff's fine. Like they can just drop that knowledge, but then it's like okay, it's like sure, I, I guess. Yeah. Because it, it and it was just a little weird that I mentioned earlier that we're literally coming in on the tail end, it seems like, or the tail end question mark, because like Josh had mentioned with the bad guy. When he's dying, he's like, oh, if I'm their last one, that must mean dot, dot, dot. And then it's like yeah. we don't really get to see what that means. Or it's like because he talks about a level system and that he's pretty close to the top. I'm talking about the bad guy here. Yeah. That he's pretty close to the top of the level but not the top. So it's like have they defeated them already? Is that what he meant? Or yeah. does he say there's still more powerful people out there that are going to come fuck them up? And then don't they drop the cubes at the end? They just like fucking leave them. They're like in the sand. It's like, yeah, yeah I think we they got, do fall at some It's like, point. we got all the cubes, we're good, and then they're walking off to go to the beach. And it's like, okay, so what, wait, is it just a Millennium Rubik's Cube, like Jose said? Like, what, what yeah, is it? Yeah, you have to build your own Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like they, yeah. they there's a g- different personality her, in that a, one. Yeah, he gave her a Rubik's Cube at the very beginning, and she couldn't solve it, so she took it apart. But then someone <laughs> stole all of them. So they've been tracking down all the Rubik's mm-hmm. Cube pieces. Yeah, she got it before the research facility when she joined. Then a bunch of bullies took them, and they all yeah. became parasites. I See, I agree. That, like Sam said, there was like 39 pages, I, I think. So you had, yeah. what, another 16 where you could have elaborated? Yeah, there maybe, was – go ahead. Uh, like just something that the Millennium or that, that special cube did. You know, even if we don't know what it does, completing it, does it activate something? Does – a light start shining from it or like is there a new section of their 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 job their mission that they have to complete you know i feel like it needed a tiny bit of a backstory just a little bits here and there yeah a little bit more world building or something like that Hmm. just a tiny bit well they tried to do some of that i think with like the water you know like in the water but it's like Uh, why why do we that doesn't come into play in this one shot the the only thing i think that would have done is that like if they were stronger near water or something the, I, like that. And because if it was so dry, maybe that's why he got caught on fire or so maybe easily. maybe it was like, yeah, hey, we come to suck out this parasite because he's sucking up all the water. He's like a plant. That's, yeah. You know? He's that's like a plant eater or something. So, but they yeah. don't, I think, ever talk about it with the plant guy. Well, they don't. They there's don't no way it. to like Im- infer or imply yeah. that. he's He's got nothing to do with it. I mean, out so. of the three we read this week, I kind of like the ideas of this one the most, but it's just not yeah. the most well executed. Com- yeah. I agree. So uh, with that, let's talk about the three that we read this week. So starting in reverse order, we just did Fata Morgana by Altradesi. Then we did Kenji's Normal Life by Malachi Monroe. And we started with Cyber Droids by Venetius Lavore. What did you guys think? Which one did you like the most? Um, you know, any standouts for you guys? So I agree with you, Sam. Uh, I thought Fata Morgana had like a lot of really cool bits to it. And if it had been executed, maybe just even more like cohesively not necessarily like change anything just focus on certain things about the story i would have probably picked that one this week um kenji's normal life was funny and everything but i didn't it wasn't like up there for me it didn't like do anything like major so i would probably this week go with cyber droids just because like jose said i fucking love metabots when i was a kid and i like another avenue for that and i would like to see where this one goes jose what'd you think i'm gonna go straight with uh cyber droids it was just something a little bit more that i'm familiar with but i thought overall they did a better job executing yeah and uh once again i kind of like the art style of all of them we did this week it was not they looked I like don't... they were drawn at home almost and yeah. then just scanned over and then redone. And I don't mean computer. that in like yeah. a bad way. I kind of like that it's almost like amateurish. Sketchy. I kind of like that. Um but I too would have gone with Cyber Droids. I just think the world is cool. I would love to see more of it. I like the battle bots fucking arena setup going. It's kind of like Pokemon with fucking metal bot robots. Um but like 
has been said, Fata Morgana was very good. I thought Kenji's Normal Life had some very good parts, but then some very low parts. And it was very short. And the part that is named after the title, his normal day, was my least favorite part of the manga. <laughs> so I just feel like that didn't need to be in there. But Cyber Droids as a package, I thought was very good. It sets up a lot of stuff. It shows you what the world's like. There's gangs, there's junk traders, there's the tournament. There's this guy who's way stronger than everybody else. So there's probably much stronger opponents to fight. So I yeah. feel like they just leave more open for me to want to go back to that world out of the other three. Meanwhile, Fate of Morgana seemed like it finished, and we already saw Kenji's normal life. So what am I supposed to see out of that? <laughs> so th our winner this week is going to be Cyber Droids by Venetia's Lavore. Congratulations. Fantastic job. We will be back every Friday with a new Jump to Zuka. I think they announced their official winner in December. So this could be oh. a long haul because... Uh, we got a lot to read. We got a lot of viewer submissions. If you submitted your own, be sure to let us know. We'd love to read more of them. We might mix in some non-viewer submissions because there were a lot of submissions that got blitzed in at the last yeah. second that we were just never going to see. There's 35 pages right now. Yeah. Holy There's shit. There's a lot. I'm telling you, things got people blitzed it in. So there's a lot of opportunity. We'll be back. So be sure to subscribe, like the video, hit the alert button because you'll get a notification every time we upload a video which is generally at 4 a.m. PST. If you want to mark your calendars, that's when we put up new videos. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave your comment with your favorite one this week. If you had one that differed in particular, I would love to know what reasoning you have for that. With that, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.